Good morning. Welcome to another episode of The Conversation here on TOS Television Network, your digital first on African news network. And of course, I'm bringing you the show from Abuja, Nigeria's capital city, and my name is Ade Suasui. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about something that's quite sensitive. So um, Nigeria is largely a multi-religious country, and a lot of time religion plays an important role, an important aspect in, you know, in us as a people. But the, the issue of religious intolerance has been brought to the fore in the last few days over the death of Deborah Samuel, a 200-level student, an uh, undergraduate student in Sokoto State that was murdered um, over allegations of blasphemy. And that was, that's what we're going to be looking at on the show today. Religious intolerance in Nigeria, um, Deborah Samuel's murder. And to join me in having a conversation here in the studio is Ahmed Buhari, an African Union ambassador and former presidential candidate. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. Good to be here this far. Yes. And now let's, let's get straight into it. There's no... I, I did say earlier that Nigeria is a multi-religious country, but there's no denying the fact that the biggest fault, one of the biggest faults of us as a people is religious intolerance, right? And looking at how that has defined us as a country, why do we have so much, just, just to start the conversation, why is there so much level of religious intolerance in Nigeria, knowing that we have so many religions in Nigeria, but why, why, why that level of religious intolerance in your perspective? So it's important that I clear the air that I'm not a cleric yeah, I know. Okay, okay. of any of the yeah. religions, um, but I am from the Muslim faith. Yeah. And I agreed to do this interview because someone has got to speak reason to all of us and see how we can protect our society, how we can live together in peace, mm -hmm. harmony, mm -hmm. and like you said, promote tolerance. Yeah. Because of the diversity, because of the complexities, it is important for us to create institutions that will put these checks and balances to ensure that we do not, you know, trample upon other people's beliefs, concerns, or what they hold very dearly to themselves. For me, I think one of the biggest problems we're facing, or like you asked, what do I really think is the reason why people are not tolerant? I have said it many times, that I hold the government responsible mm. for the failures in our societies. Including religious failures? Including religious, the religious space, because everything is under the government. Okay. First of all, there is no low level of education. There is high level of unemployment. And there's high level of unawareness. Mm. So a lot of people living in small spaces only understand what is going on in those small spaces. And we have failed to let them understand that just a kilometer out of this space, there is a different entity, a different people, a different belief that exists. And you are expected as a matter of law, abiding the law of the land, to live with those people in peace and harmony and that mm. you're not superior to them. Mm. Neither are you inferior to them. Mm. But you're all Nigerians first before you talk about which religion you belong to or which tribe you belong to. Mm. Now the failure for government to push this narrative out makes everybody believe that it starts and ends with me. And that is why when they see something alien to what they understand, they react most times negatively. So, if sorry to interject, but if we're going to blame the government largely, where does that leave religious leaders? Because I know that Nigerians somewhat hold dearly uh, re clerics, religious leaders, more than they would hold maybe government laws and all of that. So, if we're going to blame the government, where does that leave religious leaders? Do not leaders? forget that religious leaders, traditional leaders, you and I are all under. The government. Okay. A few years ago, the governor of Kaduna State, um, Mala Nasri Erufai, yeah. came up with the idea of a religious bill where every man or woman, a person who wants to mount the pulpit to preach on religious matters, would have to have undergone a certification that certifies you after you've gone through that training and through that checks. You can be satisfied to mount the podium or the pulpit and preach. Mm. In other words, the state would have told you your limits, what is allowable, 
and what can work with our challenges. Mm. Because more than anything else, peace is paramount. Yeah. And because of the complexities of what we just described, it is important for us to put some together frameworks that would guide us on how we operate. Mm. But I remember at that time, people from the opposing faith or from the other faith said, you're not going to come and dictate to us how we preach. And there was huge pandemonium. People who were not even from Kaduna states, were from other states, were upset that something like that was about to be put together by Nasri Erufai. And they were more concerned about the messenger than the message that was about to be uh, put together for us to look into and understand. I read that bill mm. and it was perfect for our situation. Mm. It was just going to be a bill that would make sure that, in fact, the state would tell clerics what to also talk about that they believe, not out of the religious context now, but what areas of the religion you need to promote mm. so that we can put together a framework that will help us achieve peace, that will help us progress together and you know, more than anything else, promote tolerance. Okay. But we fought it down. I'm telling you, before we can move forward, that bill would have to be revisited mm. and we'll have to find a way to accept it and allow it hold ground. Okay. The other thing that I think is very important is the role of traditional leaders, okay. emirs, obis, onis, and the rest. As we stand right now, the constitution has put them underneath local government local, chairman. Yeah. Before now, they had the power to just say stop and the whole community stops to listen to what the religious, the traditional leader is saying. They, we respected the traditional leader so much that no matter how angry we were, all they needed to do was to speak. But today, people who are traditional leaders who are probably going to last about 40 to 50 years based on their, the span of their life are now subjected to be under local government chairman who will be there for maybe two, three years under the instructions of a governor who will be there for maximum eight years. Okay. Something is So that brings missing. us back to the government. Now let's get back, you know, to Deborah Samuel's merger. Going by your uh, knowledge of yes. the Islamic faith and right. the Quran, does she blaspheme? Yes. Okay. Um, what is blasphemy? Blasphemy is anything you say or do mm. that upsets or contradicts or angers the faith of other religions. Mm. Now, with regards to the late um, Deborah. Deborah, may I still rest in peace, she was upset that messages that were irrelevant were, be, were being sent to a particular WhatsApp group they had created for a different purpose. Mm -hmm. And so out of anger, she sent a voice note saying, you should not send this kind of messages here. What this platform was created for was to share messages to promote our educational activities, talk about assignments, exams, tests, and lesson notes, not talk about your profit. And then she said, and then the last part was where she, she actually angered people from the Islamic faith. So you think she deserved to die? Like the death, the death penalty was justifiable? There is no reason on earth why a mob should take it upon itself to take the life of another human being in a country where there are laws. Okay. And I just told you the constitution talks about blasphemy clearly and it did not say it's for Muslims or it's for Christians it's for everybody so when somebody upsets you when somebody does something wrong to you no matter the evidences you have clearly before you you are supposed to subject the matter to the laws of the land mm. so Deborah had offended those people they were supposed to report the matter the police would take the girl they would take her to court she would get her day in court and the court would decide Okay. And, you know, in, in reality, I, I was discussing with my friend earlier and we talked about the Malaysian visa. Mm. When you apply for the Malaysian visa, there's a big red stamp on it that says, if you take in drugs into our country, it's a death penalty. Yeah. And they're not joking about it. Yeah. If they catch you, 
you're going to die. Yeah. But you die right there? No. No. You've been taken to prison. You get a day in court. You get a lawyer to defend you. When you have been found guilty beyond reasonable yeah. doubt, you face the death penalty. This is how things are done sanely so that we do not fall apart completely. So what it means now is if an evil man in the, in the, in the heart of a Muslim society fights with a Hausa man mm. and slaps the Hausa man, mm. the mob can decide to kill him. Okay. Not because he is, um, not because of anything, but because they feel right here, we are more than you, why touch our own? Now, if we're going to continue taking laws like this or making actions like this, we will not be able to contain ourselves. Okay. Everything will go out of control. Okay. Which is why what happened to Deborah was wrong. So why do we... At the same time, like I said earlier, what Deborah did was wrong. was wrong. We must understand our limits. We must understand the red lines that exist. Mm. I'll give you another example. In Islam, the belief is that Jesus Christ is not the Son of God. Yes, but to me, as a Christian, that's you blasphemy. Exactly. So every day for a Muslim, a Christian is being blasphemous when they say Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yeah. And when a Muslim is trying to talk and say Jesus Christ is a prophet of Allah, a Christian is angry. How dare you call my Jesus Christ a prophet? Yeah. So these things happen every day. We must learn to understand that that is what you believe in. The same way somebody who worships Ogun and um, Ifa and the rest, and you say, oh, those idol worshippers, forget about them, they are useless. You are also performing a blasphemous act against them. Okay. You are angering them. Oh. That is what they believe in. Like I said from the beginning, in this society, for us to live in peace, no one is superior to the other, no one is inferior to the other. Okay. We must learn to live by the laws of the land. And for people who say, oh, there's a Sharia law that we believe in, oh, yes, fine and good. That Sharia law is embedded in the Constitution and in the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay, that, that brings me to, I know you did say something about the death penalty not uh, um, being in the Quran anywhere. When, when we started, when we're talking behind the cameras, I was going to ask you, why do we have that disparity in view in relation to, to this matter? I do know that I've, I've heard some Muslims who, who did say, justified the fact that the death penalty was justifiable for blasphemy, but you were saying otherwise. Why do we have that disparity in view? I think what is most important here is for anybody who is justifying the death of late Deborah, I think what is important is to show us in the Quran where exactly it states that somebody says something about the Prophet Wasallam, peace be upon him, in a derogatory way that they should be killed. Do not forget, during the lifetime of the Prophet Wasallam, many people refused to receive the message just the way Jesus Christ worked through trying to get the people's attention mm. oh God does exist this is his message oh leave us alone we want to stick to our old ways this is what we know the prophet received bashing from the people mm. of Mecca there was a time I think one of the famous stories was when there was a man who would always wait for him to start praying and when he starts praying he takes his whole dustbin the whole garbage and pours it on him mm. while he will be praying. And then when he finishes praying, he will just dust off and the people will be like, let's go and deal with that man. No, 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 no. Patience. Sabr. Sabr. One day he prayed and he finished praying and no dirt on him. And he said, why is that man that always pours dirt on me? And he said, he's very ill. He's very ill? Let's go say hello to him. And they bought some nice provisions for him and they took to him. And he was like, I do this to you every day and you repay me back like this. He converted and became a Muslim. There were other people who would stone him, who he would say, don't fight them. There were a group of people who came and they peed on the body of the mosque. And it was the, the, the followers of the Prophet were so angry and they wanted to, they grabbed those people, arrested them, and they wanted to, you know, uh, punishment on them. And he said, no, 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 leave them alone. Just get water and wash it off. This is the tolerance. When you act like that, the people will be like, ah, oh, indeed, this peaceful religion you talk about, Islam, is indeed a religion of peace. But I cannot in one breath say 
Islam is a peaceful religion and in that same breath say we can kill. When the Prophet Sallallahu that we are trying to protect during his time clearly said patience, patience, patience. And you know this is so important because we must take it across board. Mm. We must talk to people of all faith, mm -hmm. not in a paparazzi manner, but in a real heart-to-heart -heart talk. That when you mount the pulpit, the things that you choose to talk about should be things that would help us live in peace. Mm. Because by the time everybody starts burning and killing everything, there will be no religion for us to even look at. Mm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we're out of time. But to be clear, in one word... You're condemning the, the, what happened to Deborah and you're saying it's anti-Islam and then the justice should, should take its cause. Deborah, Deborah shouldn't have been killed. Yeah. Deborah should have been taken to the law uh -huh. uh, to take its cause. Uh -huh. And for every other person, uh, Muslim, Christian, Ifa, Ogu, whatever religion you practice, try to respect other people uh -huh. and learn to be tolerant. All right. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with me on conversation this morning. It was a pleasure to have you. Same here. Thank you. And thank you for staying with me up until this time on the conversation. Do not forget, I'll be back here same time, same channel tomorrow. But before then, follow us across all social media uh, uh, page. It's TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. The channel to subscribe to on YouTube is TOS TV Network as well. And of course, stream our website, www.tostvnetwork.com for news, stories and happenings from across the world. Thank you again. My name is Ade Soelsi and please join me again tomorrow. Thank you.